This is the Parent Care and Helpline Show. My name is Sharon Watts, and it's so good to be back here. I hope you're well. How is your week been? So today on the show, the very beautiful Anthea Apele. Anthea is a visual artist who works mainly with oil on canvas. She studied fashion design and technology at the London College of Fashion, now called the University of Arts. Anthea took her painting in 2007. Her works have been featured at exhibitions and sold at auctions. She also loves to share her unique perspective on relationships, and that's where she's here. Welcome, Miss Anthea. Hello, it's a pleasure to be here. Hello, Lagos. Yeah, nice to have you. I was shaking my shaker for you, boy. Kind of <laughs> it's okay. Good to have you, sis. Welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Being single, you mm. know, in our society, in in fact, in the world, it's uh, it kind of has in different well, I guess in different societies, it kind of has has different connotations to it. Yeah. yeah. Because even if you're you're getting on with your life and thinking that you know I'm alive, I'm happy, I have peace, I have everything I need, I work hard, I live well, even if you yeah. are in a place of um, peace, mm -hmm. place if you have peace, you have satisfaction, people are still gonna come up to you mm -hmm. and remind you or look at you, you get the looks. Yeah. I get the looks all the time. Mm -hmm. I will say on air here, I'm 50. Mm -hmm. I turned 51 this month. It doesn't look like it at all. Mm -hmm. This is like 10 years off marriage, trust me. <laughs> so I, me. I turned- At the end of the show, you're gonna tell us your beauty regimen because <laughs> this is not normal. Like, how do you look like that? You know, the first time I met you, I nearly, I nearly felt like, what? Then you told me your age, I'm like, how is it even possible? <laughs> yeah, really? Yes. Yeah, so. so I'm 50 and I get the looks more than a 40 year old would. I get the looks. I, I get the, you know, when you get to, even when you get that, when you get to 50, you, people stop asking. Mm. They stop, but they, you still get the looks. They look at you and, you know, you can hear them asking in their heads, what happened? What happened? What happened? But the answer really is, is life. Life happens, and it's not about, I've come to understand over the years, that it's not about what you want. It's about where you need to be at a certain point in your life. Mm -hmm. And if you find yourself at 40, you find yourself at 35, find yourself at 40, 45, 50, you're not married. It is not about, I want to marry, I want to get married, I want to get married. Mm -hmm. It's about where am I now? And what can I be at this time that I am? I'm not married. Who am I? You take, take time to get to know yourself as a single person. Because marriage is not an accomplishment. And it's not an achievement. If you check it, you will not hear any married person saying, I accomplished marriage. I achieved marriage. <laughs> that is a delusion. It is a gift. It is a blessing. It is a desire. It is not a need. It is not a need. It is not something that... If you don't have it, your life will not be balanced. Almost like you're incomplete. In your incomplete, thank you. But it is a, it's, in many cases, it's a choice. In many cases, it's not a choice. I don't want to get married. In some cases, I do want to get married. You spoke earlier about people who have been divorced, people who have been widowed. They are single people. A lot of them are single people. A lot of them are older. Are they incomplete? You know, so... They wouldn't say that. They wouldn't say that. People who, who, who had good marriages... I've decided that, okay, I lost my partner. I don't think I, I need to get married again. You know, if I if I meet somebody, maybe, but it's not a need. Yeah. Are they, you know, um, unfulfilled? Yeah. Are they in the wrong place? So it's about where you need to be as a person, as an individual. Mm -hmm. It's not about what you want. Because, God, we want everything. In life, you want everything. But everything is not good for you. Everything might not work for you. I'm not saying come at the time you want it. I might not come at the time you want it, but it can come at the time you need it. It can come at the time you're really prepared for it. Some of us who wanted to get married at 25, some of us who wanted to get married at 50, sorry, at at 20, at 30, some people would have made very terrible wives mm -hmm. because they had not gotten, because it's not just about uh, a woman finding a husband. Yeah, you have no husband, find husband, find husband. Yeah. The man needs a good wife. And some of us might not have been at that place at that time. Mm. So as, you know, I'm bringing God into it. As God yes. wants you to get, wants to give, wants to get, get you a good husband, he also wants that husband to get a good wife. Somebody who will balance him out as well. Mm. So it's a two-way thing. Now that you've said this, I'm going to put mm -hmm. you in Go ahead. Here. 
Now that you said that, this actually reminds me of something my mom usually says. She was saying, I know that you keep praying every day that God, it almost seems like you have a very close relationship with God. So, but God cannot gift a bad woman to his son. <laughs> That person is beloved, just as beloved yeah, as you boy. are. Yes, to God. And yeah. God is looking for the best thing for him because he's also praying, I want a good wife. Yeah. And she, you're praying, I want a good husband. So you can't just present yourself and say, look, wife, here I am. You have to treat me good. What are you, many women hate this question, but what are you bringing to the table? In As a mature single, you have so much. When I'm leaving the younger people behind and I'm talking about people who are mature now. Yes. You have hindsight of wisdom that can only be collected by experience exactly. and by watching other people, how they relate in their relationships. Mm -hmm. You have had the, because by the time you're my age, all your friends are married and some are divorced. You know, some have separated. But you have had the hindsight, you've been to everybody's wedding. You've been to everybody's house. You've seen them have the babies. You've seen them. You've been at the one. You've been the one at the end of the call, mm -hmm. hearing the problems because they can't tell their married friends what's going on. So they call you, the single friend, and see see what's going on because they feel you won't judge them because married people tend to judge married people. So your single friend will call you and tell you things that she can't tell her other married friends because they will say, "Oh well, you're not doing this. You're not being a wife. You're not this. Me, my husband does like this. Me, this is how I talk to my husband. Sometimes they want an objective view, so they'll call you the single friend. You have learnt from that." You have learned because you're allowed into spaces that other married people aren't allowed to. So you have hindsight of wisdom, how relationships work. You have wisdom on just your own personal experiences. Mm -hmm. And if you have not learned anything, I, I struggle with people who have been blessed with life mm -hmm. and you don't learn. Mm -hmm. You have to learn. If you have stayed this long and you're single, then there's something that you're going to that has been has been added to you that you're going to bring into a place where it is most needed. It, it almost reminds me of cases where we see women so scared, like they're getting to their thirties and their forties. The length of time. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely a benefit if you get to when I before I got to thirty, ah, I could not breathe. I'm not married. 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 By by my thirtieth birthday I, I felt a bit better i felt like 30 was the mark when i was 25 mm -hmm. and then when i was 35 i thought 40 has to be you know 40 mm -hmm. 40 that has to be the mark mm -hmm. and i got to 40 and i was not married and i still had peace mm -hmm. i still had peace it's not that i don't desire it deeply mm -hmm. it's not that i don't want it but sometimes you life like i said life happens mm -hmm. and you cannot explain it yeah. It's not as if you 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 did something that many people other people didn't do. Absolutely. It's not as if you didn't. It's not as if you chased well, away everybody. Exactly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you can't sit in the judgment seat on your life and say, "Oh, it's because I'm this." That's you're already setting yourself up yeah. for for a huge for for depression. Yeah. And as you get older, you don't want to be depressed. As you get older, you know, I, I my mindset is keep going. As far as you will go, as far as far as nothing is stopping you, mm -hmm. keep going. So you keep hoping, you keep living, and like I'm saying about, I'm talking about maturity because it's 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 a gift. Maturity is a gift. Mm -hmm. So what I pray for now, because I'm at a certain age, I'm not married. I pray for long life. Mm -hmm. I pray for for health, mm -hmm. so that as I'm going forward, I'm enjoying my life. Mm -hmm. I'm because I'm hopeful that I'm going to meet somebody. Yeah. So I pray for long life that I will enjoy the person. Not that I'll marry the person and tomorrow he will be gone Absolutely. and I will be dead. Yeah. So I'm praying for long life. I'm praying for good health so that I can even enjoy being in the marriage while I'm married for however long it lasts, you know. So I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful and I believe I will meet somebody because it is part of life. It is a given. People should be married. People should, you know, should be able rather to be married so like i said if they, want to. if they want to it's it's not um it's it's not an achievement yes. it is part of you know it is a it is something that you get into you get into it responsibly you get into it with and if you're young you're just taking a chance but while you're older when you get older you you don't even have time to ask the same questions you ask when you were 25. Your mind is more settled. Yeah. You like, you understand who you are. 
you understand what you're bringing. You understand your value because you've been with yourself. Yes. You've gotten to know yourself, which is a lot of married people don't get to know themselves. Younger people don't get to know themselves till they are married. They find themselves married. In I'm just talking about the advantages of being single. Yes. Okay. And it's almost like you're bringing in the self-discovery bit of it. Yes. I'm not saying that that's the best way that you stay single. I'm, please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying stay single your whole life and then marry when you're late. But I'm just saying when you get to a certain age and you find that this is my life, you not. use the best be the best single person you can be. Ooh, so that you will attract the best single man you can attract. I love that. I want to clap. <laughs> be Fantastic. the best single person. So you per can attract the best, best man. Yes, the best person. The way you wanted to attract the best person for yourself when you were younger is the same way you want to attract the best person for yourself when you're older. You have not diminished. You've grown older, but you have not diminished. In fact, you have been added. Things have been added to you. Your life is not less a life because you are a certain age. Mm, I've got Anthea Epella in the on the Parents Connect Helpline show right here on Hot 93.3 and I tell you for one she is speaking from the heart right deep from the, her belly like she's pouring it out from her belly and that's what we need right now in today's world where we have women who speak truth to each other. So this is like a, a girl's gang kind of thing today. You're speaking from a place of wholeness. Many mature women, singles, even married, are not whole. Mm -hmm. That's why there's so much people, people get in in two months and they come out. Yeah. They get in in 10 years. It's almost like yeah, it's almost been like an unhappy journey. Mm -hmm. Could it be because this whole thing is missing before they clung to this person? Yeah. It could be about it, it could be about the kind of person you are. If you are not stable, a stable-minded person, if you were not confident before you got married, and also depends on the person you're married to, because some some men will hold their wives' hands throughout. Some people have understanding, deep understanding that keeps even the most troubled situations stable, yeah. because the man and the woman understand each other, they respect each other. But where some of those things are missing, yeah, you will find a, a woman who is thinking this must all be because. I made the wrong choice. It must be my fault. Maybe I wasn't this. I should have done this. I should have done that. We even find, even in abusive relationships, women say, oh, I could have done this. I could have done that. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have said this. I shouldn't have said that. Mm -hmm. And they are blaming themselves. Mm -hmm. And they are giving themselves, you know, the hardest time. Mm -hmm. So you are wholesome is where you look at yourself. You assess yourself. You, first of all, you agree with your situation. I am a certain age. I am a woman. I am not married. I don't have children. I am not in a relationship. Be honest with yourself. Be clear with your situation. Know who you are. Know your circumstance. Before you start to sway with the world's judgments. Know what you are. I. This is what I am. What can I do with what I am? How can I be with what I am? And as far as you are free, as far as you're not being indicted for being single, as far as you're not being jailed for being single, you know, as far as it's not a crime, you are free to be anything you want to be while you wait. You know, we're talking about finding love. But love attracts love. You, at, the, at a certain age in your life, especially when you get to your 40s and you start to to um, you, you come to the realization that oh I'm single, mm -hmm. it should start to at that age forties going on forties is the time where you are supposed to be thinking about giving back to mm -hmm. society. You have been given life, you have lived, you are all all things being equal, all things being equal. You're okay, you're healthy, you are all right. You you can live, mm -hmm. you can live. As far as you are breathing, you have been given a chance to move forwards. As far as you are alive. You have been given a chance to go forward. So you look at it from the sense that, okay, I have been given life, I'm 40 something, I've reached this. Thing. It's time for me to start giving back and start to think of ways. You start to transform yourself into a giver rather than somebody who is sitting and waiting to receive. Jesus. Start to give back. And it's in that giving back. What are you giving? You're giving love. Hmm. You're giving of yourself. Because You're giving sis, what you have learned. Exactly. Mm -hmm. sis, this thing you've mentioned now is many times we have wrong 
and mature women who at this point are bitter. Mm -hmm. So rather than giving love, I'm just trying to buttress what you say, rather than giving love is anger, it is hatred, it is hoarding. Cynicism. Absolutely. Cynicism. So instead of sitting down and telling people, ah, I used to date one person. This is how he wants to see somebody. Ah, don't follow this type of people. I used to follow this type of person. Yeah, ah, yeah. rich men, they will dump you after they just start. Take your mind away from your past, the negatives of your past. Pick up from what you've learned. Pick up from what you've learned. Forgive. If anybody has offended you in the past, forgive. Because that affects your health. It affects your state of mind. It affects your positivity. It affects, you know, it affects even the love that you want to give out. It affects it. So be there for people. All you have to do, I'm not saying anybody has to go and start to work on some kind of love project. No. Just be there for people. Be involved with things. Find things that if somebody invites you to join a group or something, don't say, ah, no, I'm too old. But join the group. Join the group. If you think you, you, you'd be surprised at what you have in you. So take to take your mind off being alone. Participate in things. Go out when you're invited. Show up. Turn up. Turn up for family. Turn up for strangers. Since you're dropping, you're dropping them back to me. So as you're turning up for these people, yeah. in that you're giving of yourself. And that means you're sharing. And that means you're loving. You're giving love. And in all of that, you will receive. You will meet the, in, in, your, in your going about your business, going about your life. Going about where, being where you need to be at certain times is where this partnership will be found. Negativity hey. never brought good. It doesn't bring, and it will bring you, attract the wrong kind of person to you. Yeah. And then you might even get into that stage where you're, you're, you're desperate. Yeah. You know, you look around, Neka is married. You look around, Chichi is married. You look around, this person is married, your best friends. And then you just decide that, you know what? The devil is a liar. I must. And then you now take it into a, a, a stage where you don't need to be. You don't need to be in that place. You need to be in a place of, you need to have a sound mind. You need to have a sound mind at all times, especially as you're growing older, because your body cannot take any negativity anymore. Your body is different from when you can you can't bounce back from things so much. So you need to stay positive so that you are healthy. And a healthy person can achieve so much. So stay healthy, stay physically healthy, stay mentally healthy, you know, do things that are good for others so that when you're doing these things, you're returning joy, peace to yourself. They say, what did you do today? Rather than sitting down and waiting for something to happen in that department of getting married, you went out and you followed your church group or something and you went for a prayer walk. So something you wouldn't do normally. Or you just, they went for one trip to, I don't know, to a golf course. You went there with them. Surprisingly, you had a good time. Maybe you went with some people to motherless babyhood. Or maybe you just, you know, um, um, made some new friends. You went somewhere, made some new friends. They said, oh, come to this event, come to that event. You went. Be alive. Mm -hmm. You are breathing. Be alive. Be alive. The more you work on being alive, the brighter you are. The more peace you have, the more you have to say in a discussion. If somebody meets you, this is your so supposed husband now comes across to you and he's having a conversation with you, mm -hmm. and you have not done anything yourself in the last five years because you are waiting, you are angry, you are annoyed. What are you going to discuss with him? Mm -hmm. Marry me. If you don't want to marry me, please go away. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> you know? No. <laughs> You should be able well, it's to. It's true. Uh, it's always true. You because should be able you've to. You've not really worked on yourself. You've not worked on yourself. You've used it to vent and to be angry. To be angry. Without so, adding anything to yourself. Any man comes to talk to you, the first thing you say to him is, I beg, I beg, I beg. If you don't want to marry me, please just take mm -hmm. yourself away. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you could have a wholesome conversation with that person. This is what I do. You say, Where have you? He, he can call you and say, Where have you been? Say, I went. To this, I do this, I do that. I do this on Tuesdays, I do this on Thursdays. Um, I traveled, I came back. Oh, I went to see my uncle. I've not seen my uncle in so many years. I went to visit him. Be alive. Be alive. Be alive. Be alive. So that when that man comes, he will see life, he'll be attracted to the life in you. He's bringing life into his home. You know, the greatest, one of the biggest issues is okay, you pass a certain age, you don't have children. And I, I look at that sometimes. I feel like, okay, I, I wish. 
um, when I was younger, I had had children. I really do. You know, I love children. I, 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 I adore them. I wish I did. But you get to a stage where you realize, okay, maybe I will not be physically able to have children. But goodness gracious, there are so many children without parents <laughs> in this world. That you can take on. There are so many. Now, I'm assuming that many people that are listening will understand. I'm a Christian, so I think that, okay, one day, I'm going to go to heaven and I'm going to stand in front of the Father. Mm -hmm. And is he going to ask me, am I going to say to him, uh, why didn't you give me children when I was on earth? Mm -hmm. I actually can hear him say, I did. What did you do with them? Oops. I can actually hear him say that. Yeah. Uh, there are children everywhere. It did, chances are you might even marry someone who already has children. Mm -hmm. Those are your children. They do not necessarily have to come out of your body. And if you've missed that opportunity where they have not, do not be bitter about it. Be like you're talking about wholesomeness. I think that's the whole key to this single thing. Try and be wholesome. There's so much you can offer because of your age. You can take care of a baby. You can take care of a 25-year-old if the 25-year-old needs taken care of. You can be a mother to anybody who is younger than you because of your age. So use that to... Help people that leverage I, on that. Yeah, leverage on that. that for you free. Yes. So God is looking for God is looking for for people to impart wisdom on younger children, people who are not too busy with their own kids. Could that be you? Could that be you in your singleness? Could that be you in your in your state of oh I'm not married? I know women who are not yet married who have gone to and adopt children, yeah. and they are looking after them and they are blessed for it. Yeah. So if you want to calculate all the things that society and culture said you should have yes. and you didn't get those things and you're using those things against yourself sounds... you're going to have a miserable old age you will be bitter and if you're bitter you will start to get dementia i'm just saying it i've seen it <laughs> you start to get dementia yeah. you start to get sorrowful you will start to get miserable nobody wants to be around you it's only somebody with pure love of god that will come you know what i mean yes, so yes. consider the fact that you are single you may not even ever get married so be good to people around you. So in your old age, you will have people around you. Sow into the lives of others. Help people. Be the good auntie. Be the good auntie. Be the, the, the good sister. Be a friend. Too good. This is almost looking like we need to write a book. <laughs> we can. We can. I guess book. <laughs> because the knowledge you're sharing here is like so much. And I like the fact that you're speaking right in your spirit. You know, where... Women, because of our age, almost like every Tom, Dick, and Harry is of interest to us. I like for us to talk about frailty. Okay. The woman's mm. femininity mm. is good. God gave that to her. But where, when vulnerability comes in as a result of our age, mm. and because you were scared of being alone, mm. can we distinguish the two? Frailty and vulnerability. Mm. That, that frailty, you, you can be sensitive, mm. right? You can be really sensitive. Yes. You can be going around with a, a, a like you have your head is is hanging kind of mm -hmm. you know your head is not really lifted up mm -hmm. it's hanging because you know look at me i didn't get married you're, so it affects yes. your your confidence it affects so you're looking and you're thinking you know what at this point maybe i've made bad decisions in the past at this point i'll just take anything yes. i'll just take anyone and there's lots of mr anyone out there who are looking to jump on you who are looking who to... can smell your loneliness a mile away thank you thank you they can sniff it they can smell it they know that this one if i talk to her i know what she's looking for and probably they've tested other people in the past they know they know your type mm -hmm. because your type is out there a lot you know so you want to be different you want to be you don't want that um people to tell you you are too choosy i used to get that a lot you know you are too choosy you are too this and i'm look, listening to people telling me i'm too choosy and i'm looking at their partners and thinking but you chose you took time <laughs> i remember when this man was chasing you and you are you you were telling him giving him conditions you were so choosy and you were telling him i have other people yes yeah, so other suitors other suitors are hanging so around <laughs> and so why do i no longer have a choice yes. why can't i choose so being choosy is not that you will be overly fussy it's like you know, he must, you know, people have some very unrealistic List. uh, lists. Mm -hmm. He must be tall. Mm -hmm. He must be um, from a certain tribe. He must be um, and a certain uh, level of cash. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all those mm -hmm. kind of things. Mm -hmm. He must he must speak 
a certain way. There's some people that ah, he must speak like this, yes. he must dress like this, up to dressing, you know, and those Even things. Up to fingernails. Up to thank you, you thank you. And those things are totally useless to you because what you're doing is you're forming a company, you and you have what you're bringing. He should have what he's bringing, and together that company should be able to thrive under any kind of condition. Mm -hmm. So how he his height, his his none of those things, his slim shoulders, his shoulders, his, his sexiness or not, mm -hmm. has nothing to do mm -hmm. with any of that. You are you are forming a company. That's what you do when you get married. So when you are in that vulnerable position, you really have to take time out when people speak to you to listen to what they're saying to you your choices for yourself they're not bad you know listen to what the man is saying because somebody can come and meet you your your your, your single let me give you a scenario you're mm -hmm. single you're 45 then somebody has introduced you because at that time you'll be meeting a lot of people by introduction mm -hmm. someone introduces you to a person he now finally calls you then he takes you out on some date He's very casual about it. And then he starts to tell you things like, I don't really want to be involved with anybody until for the next couple of years. I've just come out of a bad relationship. So you're listening to this person and you're like, people that introduced you to me, did they not tell you that I'm 45? Mm -hmm. What is it that you are still looking mm -hmm. for? And that man that is still looking for something that is so wonderful, chances are it's not out there. And you might waste your time with him. Mm -hmm. He might dump you and then come back and meet you. And he still hasn't found that thing that he says you are lacking so those type of people that want to take your time and then you now think okay ah, let me just hang out with him if i stay close enough to him he will change oh but i promise you the person that is is coming to meet you is 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 tr attracted to you already knows whether you are it or not in his mind in his inner man he knows whether men decide that's what men do they will meet you and they will decide. So somebody that's still telling you, I'm still deciding, mm -hmm. I'm still thinking. And it's going around. And it's going around, wasting your time. You're waiting for him to call. He's not calling. He called. He didn't call. You now enter into this childish, because yeah. it's childish. What you used to do. In your, what you used in your to your do when you were a teenager. Oh, he called. He didn't call. Oh, he said. He didn't say. Oh, please. Mm -hmm. You are too, 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 way too groomed, mm -hmm. way too mature mm -hmm. to take yourself back, way too forward to take yourself back to that type of thinking. So when you meet that type of person, identify his issues, obviously, and know that, is this person coming to waste my time? Do I need to stay in a relationship with this person and hope that one day he'll have an aha moment and decide that I'm the one for him? Because if you're hoping on that, that aha moment might never come. So the more mature you are, realize that men also are more mature. And they can come to you and you, you don't have to have and I, I know people that say okay you must date for a while but the more mature you are the less your dating time should true, be true that's true the that's less true. because you you can you can be direct yes you can be more direct than because you know stuff yes. and he knows stuff so you can say things you can cut to the chase yes you can cut to the chase you can cut it, yes. it cut, cut it all the cut off all the excesses yes the what have you. yes all the does he open the door for me did he open the door for me all those things you can cut through all those things and you can have very clear meaningful relationships with, with the, clear goals with clear goals you can ask the right questions because now you've learned mm -hmm. when you were younger you were not asking the right questions and maybe you were hit unfortunate a few times you know mm -hmm. but now that you're older you can look clearly into somebody i heard somebody say once that when you get to 40 you've met every type of person i don't know if that's true but i thought about it when i heard it and i said let me not come and be arrogant now and think eh, i've met you before no you have seen I've you before you. I've, I've met you i know your type i know what you're after yeah. i know it ahead so i i put that to one side but it is the kind of wisdom you should have met every type of person so you should know how to receive you know the person is telling you eh, I, I, I'm not ready. Uh, I, I'm, I, I'm or going back and forth. Mm. He will go one year, come back. We met you when you were 40, 46. He went for one year, called you again, came back when you were 47. You know, maybe you had a short three, three month relationship. He disappears. I don't know why men do that. There are women who actually complain about that. They're, do that? they're, they're, they're looking for something. They think that you are not good enough. That's the basic. Yeah. You are not good enough for them. 
and they go out to try and find what they think is good for them. Yeah. And a lot of the time, they don't, they, find it. they don't find it or they find the wrong thing and marry it. Mm. And then when their head is now correct, they will come back and meet you and show you their teeth. Sorry, mm. gentlemen that are listening. Mm. Show you that, start smiling <laughs> at you. And what is, at we that are point, we're, we're not, not exactly. Women, so. We're just talking to the women. They will come back and smile at you and you're like, why are you here? Yeah. She be I'm not good. I was yeah. not good. That's the question you should be asking. I was not good enough for you last year. I was not good enough for you for three years, four years ago. Why are you back here? What is it? And if they are honest, if they are honest, you will find out that they were about to take off again. So <laughs> you, you you will find out that they they've come to you because you're know. safe. Yeah. And chances are chances are if they took off before they will take off again they will take off again so you need to be looking out for somebody who is stable and let's talk about what we should be looking at yes person. stable a stable person are you stable if you yourself you are stable why would you look for somebody that's not stable and think that you the woman is going to balance him out why are you looking for somebody that is not stable and thinking, oh no, that's just the way he is. He can't help it. Yeah. Uh, then you start using it as it's love. Just, it's just yes, those type of situations, those are for God to handle. Those type of things are for his peers, his fellow men, to help him work out, you know, just like your friend, your girlfriends help you. Gotcha. Men have friends. Yeah. Yes, it is yeah. not you. It's not by... You're not a therapist. You're not, a therapist. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be a therapist by cooking for him and sleeping with him and uh, living in the same house with him and making sure that all his wants, all his desires are met. That's not therapy. You are what a man needs. And if a man needs you, he's going to, he's, he's going to do everything he can. What we do for each other in relationships is we meet our needs. It's not our wants. Men know how to find what they want. Mm -hmm. If they want this, they can find it. If they want that, they can find it. You have to be what he needs. Does he, are you meeting his need? Is he meeting your need? No, there's a, thank there's you. A there's a huge difference between wants and needs. We want, what is your need? As a man, there's some men that, they just need somebody to just keep them company, mm -hmm. travel do things with them you know somebody to just be a companion you know and if you are happy to be the man's companion and you feel that two of you can mutually respect yourselves why not and, can make it work. and we can make it work but if that's what he wants if that's what he needs mm -hmm. and you are more about what you want you're, you're gonna have issues, issues yeah. you're gonna cry so look for the person that you can meet his needs if you can meet his needs it will be easy for you very easy mm -hmm. because you do it naturally yeah. if the man says oh i normally like this and that and that and it's not a problem for you you will do it naturally mm -hmm. and his need is sorted and he's all the more in love with you because you have met his need if it is wants you can be giving him what he wants what he wants what he wants what he wants and you will not get what you need mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sis Make some very good points. This is the Parents Connect Helpline show with Sharon. I've got um, my special guest in the studio, my friend and sister, um, Anthea Epene, right here in the studio. She's an artist, um, loves painting, and she's also, she loves talking about relationships. So she's here in the studio with me. And if you've been listening, if you've been listening, it's been hot right here on Hot 93.3. She's been speaking from the heart about matured singles and finding love again. Um, most people um, will just introduce you anyway to, they will see a single person, you know, you have your friends, they will see a single person yeah. and they will see, oh, you're single. Oh, my friend is single. You guys should meet. Yes. And, <laughs> and, and they set you on this blind date. And they set you on a blind date and you go yeah. on this, you, you agree to meet the person because you don't want to be rude yeah. to your friends and you don't want your friends to, because you're, the next thing your friend will say is, ah, you're too choosy. You're too choosy. You're, too choosy. <laughs> you're yeah. trying to say, you told me you had to uh, with him. They say, he's a better person. Mm -hmm. And he's a nice man. Yeah. Ah, he's this, he's that, he's this. They'll start pumping the person up. Mm -hmm. And then you'll feel bad. So the best yeah. thing is for you to, to, say, to say yes. Now, does it always work? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think, like I said, people introduce you just for the fact that both, you are both single. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't mean that that is your person. But don't be... Don't be brash about it. Don't be rude. You never know. Mm -hmm. So if somebody introduces you to somebody, take the person's number, talk to the person, mm -hmm. learn about the person, go back to your friends and say, you know, I spoke to him. He was interesting. 
but we didn't really have common ground, yeah. you know, but we are still friends, we're still talking. Yeah. Leave your, your options okay. open. It's a good way to meet somebody because you now know that, okay, if your friends know the person, the chances are he's not a serial killer or he's not an armed robber yeah. or something. Yeah. So that's the security check has been taken care of yeah. a little yeah. bit. But if you're, you're on your, if, if you're um, uh, thinking that, oh, uh, I, I know people that say, I, I don't want to go on blind dates. Mm -hmm. Don't introduce me to anybody. Mm -hmm. But you're shutting yourself out. You just don't know. You're shutting yourself out. So I know people who have been introduced and worked mm -hmm. just like that. I have a friend. I, I, I know someone who has introduced people. Five. She, she says that that's what she was sent to this world to do. Mm -hmm. She'll just see one person, see the next person. Who that she meets? You know, she's, she says, I've been to five weddings. People that she has introduced. Okay. So, yeah. So, so she's found her purpose somehow. Somehow, <laughs> without even setting up a, an agency, yeah. she has she has accomplished so much by introducing people to each other. Introduction is a wonderful way to meet someone because it cuts a lot out of it. Yeah. And um, But then you have that, but you have that issue of having to report back to people. Mm -hmm. And it's your private life. You really shouldn't be that open. But you can... Tie it in a nutshell. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. Uh, we, we had, like I said, we had a good conversation. He's an interesting person, and let's see how it goes. Don't be too quick to knock people down. Um, don't be too quick to delete people's numbers because you are of a certain age. You have already identified things in the person. You're already annoyed with the person. Then you just if it's like this guy should not call me again. You just <laughs> block. You remove the person's number. You know. Yeah. So don't be too quick. Just yeah. leave it and just keep an open mind. I, I've just been to ask you two more questions before we wrap this up at the top of the hour. So when the relationship is not moving as fast, maybe you you found this person or you're giving this relationship a chance. Mm -hmm. And probably the, the other vibes around the relationship seem good, but then it's not moving as fast as you want it because mm -hmm. of time. Mm -hmm. Since what do you do? Mm -hmm. Sharon, I think this one, eh, we have to come back and do a special show. We have to do... <laughs> Why? What if it's not moving fast? What do you do? <laughs> that should be the topic of the I show. Agree. What if it's not moving as fast? As because for moving. older people, time is of essence. Yes. Time is of essence. You meet someone, you've waited a long time to meet someone. You just give us a little tip. Of <laughs> Where is it? You, 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 you waited so long, you meet somebody, the person's wasting your time. Mm -hmm. Do I just drop the person right here, right now, and start to move? Or do I um, just uh, hang on? Now, what are you hanging on to? That's what you ask yourself. What am I hanging on to? Listen to what the person is saying. Men are usually very honest when they are telling you about themselves. They will drop it in there. I am this type of person. I am about this. Are you listening to what he's saying? Because body language and the unspoken everything words. on the unspoken words, because the reason why he's taking time yeah. is, re is listed in all those things he's either he's saying, saying or not saying. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to make a judgment. Nobody can make that judgment for you. Based on what the man is saying or not saying, behaving or not behaving, mm -hmm. you should be able to tell that this time wasting, is it a is it time wasting? Mm -hmm. Do I need to be patient? I know that time is of essence. Do I need to be a bit more patient? Or do I need to just end it here? Because mm -hmm. I've seen this, we're going nowhere. So it's something you have to ask yourself. And keep asking the person. Frustrate the person with questions. If the person is wasting time, keep mm -hmm. asking them. Let them say, yeah, this woman, your wala is too much. Mm -hmm. It's for your own benefits. Mm -hmm. If you're not clear, keep asking. Keep checking. Keep going back and say, ah, this is, let it not be that, oh, let me be still and quiet. And if I'm still and quiet, maybe it's not going to make it move faster because you're quiet. Mm -hmm. It's just going to extend the torture. So, or the problem, <laughs> you know, it's going to keep it going yes. ahead. Yes. So keep asking. Tell the person, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't have all the time in the world. And you have been here now. We have been on this matter now two years. You know, this matter, we're going to three years. And I don't, I've told you how I feel. This is what I want. This is what I want out of life. Mm -hmm. And you don't seem to be meeting me anyway. Mm -hmm. Do you think, don't be afraid to let go. And don't be afraid of the answer. Mm -hmm. Because whatever the answer is, it will benefit you. First of all, don't forget you are a girl. You always be a girl, even when you're 80. 
So the wonderful things about yourself, the things that sometimes you think, I used to do that when I was 10 mm -hmm. and I loved it. Mm -hmm. Keep those things. It's part of your life journey. Mm -hmm. Keep those things. I used to do this when I was 18. I used to like to do this. As far as you have your physically fit yeah. and you can, if you love to maybe roller skate when you were 17, do those things. Mm -hmm. But habits are the things that, you know, we're talking about things that you've been doing your whole life, yeah. you enjoy. But habits are things that sometimes they get, um, they don't, they don't grow with you. So you are growing and your habit is stuck in the past. Your habit used to work before. It doesn't work anymore. So you, you should learn those things that don't work anymore and not be afraid to release them and replace them with good things. If you drop something from your life, replace it. If you drop something that used to give you um, let's say it used to keep you occupied mm -hmm. and you need to have that time occupied you need to have you know something to occupy yourself with pick up something that is better than that thing it's really that simple pick up something that is better pick up something that still works for you drop old habits drop the way you used to speak to people the way you used to address people mm -hmm. must change mm -hmm. the way you 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 um, behave mm -hmm. when you you go out if i used to um i, I used to uh, go to certain places. I used to behave this way when I go out. I, as you get older, curb, curb some things and leave the things that are good about yourself, the things that you love to do, the things that you've learned and picked up along the way. You know, don't drop them because you're getting old and you think I'm too old. I won't be able to. No, it's part of you. So just give me your final thoughts. Okay. It's such an interesting conversation. I would like your final thoughts for the mature woman who's listening. Final thoughts are. You brought up the word wholeness. Final thoughts are you have to be fully, you have to be whole. Love the fact, if you are a single person, my final thoughts, and I said this before, mm -hmm. be the best single person you can be. And also, be don't, don't shut yourself up. Don't get tired. Don't get fed up. If you have hope, keep your hope alive. Mm -hmm. Keep your hope alive. If you feel that you're going to get married at one day, if you are still saying to yourself, one day I'll get married, believe it. And the more you, you believe it, the more you act like somebody who is still, you are still in the market. Yes. An older woman is going to meet a divorcee. There's love who knows? for everyone. There's love for everyone. Somebody out there is going to be united with you. But he has to see you, he has to meet you, and he has to see that you are, you are available. If you are not available, if you shut down, then the world sort of shuts down as well. Keep your hope alive. Keep keep going. Like I said, I'm praying for long life because I know that there's still a lot ahead of me. Yeah. And I'm praying for good health. I'm praying for prosperity. You know, I'm praying that I'm going to gain when I meet the person I'm supposed to marry, that I will gain from meeting that person yeah. I'm going to marry. So mm -hmm. if I'm going to gain, how am I going to enjoy it if I've shut down? You need, do not shut down. That's my final. Do not shut, don't shut down. down. Don't oh shut my down. goodness. <laughs> That's been so, my Lord. I wish we just keep going and keep going because there's so much, there's so much being shared here. Thank you so much, my special guest. For the first time on the Friends Club Helpline, so Anthea and I thank you. Thank you. You can find her on socials at Instagram. It's such a lovely time to have you. Says. Thank you so much. I enjoyed being here. I, I was a bit, uh, late i'm so sorry um and um i was also a bit nervous oh. but um like i said be yourself be yourself you will be good oh Everything will we, enjoyed, we enjoyed we enjoyed our time <laughs> this has been friends for the helpline show sharon Ingmox has been my name and you've been listening to lagos's hardest radio station 93.3 You're fine, we. Yes, yes. Let me get your headphones. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, you're funny. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.